This question gives me a series of discrete time signals and then asks for the Z transform of these signals. So for most cases, we can simply apply the definition of the Z transform. So we can simply say X of Z is the summation, if we're looking at the one-sided Z transform from n equals zero, of X of n times Z to the power minus n. So in this case, the first one, two, three samples are just zero. So it would be zero plus zero plus zero, and then the fourth sample would be my five, so then I'd have five times z to the power minus, well, here n would be equal to zero, n equals one, n equals two, here n would equal to three. So it's z to the power minus three. and the remaining terms are all zero. So my Z transform is simply that, five times Z to the power minus three. The next signal is slightly more interesting because we, we have fewer zeros. So we have one, two, three, four terms that are non-zero. So to find the z-transform, we'd simply say x of z. Again, we're applying the definition. So we've got a 2 times z to the power 0 and a 3 times z to the power minus 1, a 1 times z to the minus 2, and finally a 1 times z to the minus 4. And again, that's, that's my final answer, unless I want to replace z of 0 here with simply 1, so that's just 2. So that would be the answer for part b. For part c, similar, but this term, instead of actually telling us what x actually is in terms of samples, um, we're given x as an expression using unit steps. So if you, if you imagine two discrete unit steps, so we have a unit step starting at n equals zero. So here we have n. So you'd have zeros for negative values of n, and then you'd have ones here. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. But then you have at n equals 5, you have another unit step subtracted. So at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here we're subtracting a unit step. So our final value or our final um, plot would look something like this. So you'd have the unit step from 0 until n equals 4, and then at n equals 5, it's back to zeros. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our expression, we can actually write that as a set that starts with the value 1. So you can say 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, because there are five ones, followed by zeros. Now the z-transform is easy. We can simply say x of z equals z to the power 0, z to the minus 1, 2, z to the minus 3, z to the minus 4, and the remainder will be zeros. We can replace z to the power 0 with simply 1. So that is the answer to part C.
part D is slightly different. This time we're given um, the impulse response, which looks just like that, it's two unit steps, and we're asked for the transfer function. So remember the transfer function is just H of Z, and that's just the Z transform of H of N. And we've already found that. We found it right there. So it's, we simply say h of z equals 1 plus z to the minus 1, z to the minus 2, z to the minus 3, and z to the minus 4. So nothing new here. The um, transfer function is simply the z transform of the impulse response, and that's exactly what we did in part c. Part E, we're told that our input isn't an impulse, or it isn't an impulse at t equals 0 or n equals 0. It's an impulse that's both scaled by a factor of 2 and delayed by a factor of 1. So you'd expect the output to be both delayed by a factor of 1 and scaled by a factor of 2. So y of n is equal to h, not of n, but of n minus 1. So it's 2 because there's a scaling factor, h of n minus 1. Why am I allowed to do that? Because h is the impulse response and x happens to be an impulse. So we can simply say y of n equals 2 now, h of n is this expression up here. So what I want to do now is take that and shift it. And it's shifted by one sample. So it'll be twice u of n minus 1, because it was previously u of n minus 2 u of n minus 5 minus 1. Okay, and if, if you like, we can write it like this initially. And then we can say it's 2 u of n minus 1 minus u of n minus 6, and that would be our final answer.